Hey guys, what's up? It's Derek. Welcome to the Conscious Report, episode number three, I believe. Today we're discussing choosing voluntary poverty as a strategy to fighting the state. So, I'll talk to you a little bit about voluntary poverty, also known as voluntary simplicity, simple living, a couple different phrases. Um, and first of all, the reason I am exploring this idea, how it happened for me, is going through a process of self-discovery, uh, reevaluating what was important to me in my life, uh, as I mentioned to you before, going to prison, then starting to, I guess, let go of the material world more and more and be concerned more with the uh, the inner world, and so material possessions didn't seem to, to hold as much sway over me anymore. <clears throat> then I also, after a period of time, I, I left from Houston at the beginning of 2011, January 2011, I sold all my belongings, I quit my job, and I left my apartment, and I spent three months traveling by bicycle from Houston to uh, Alamogordo, New Mexico, volunteering on farms, using wolfing worldwide opportunities on organic farms, couch surfing, also using another website called warmshowers.org, and just traveled with my bike with all the supplies I needed. I camped out in my tent whenever I needed to, and then when I wasn't, at a, uh, when I wasn't doing that, I was staying at a farm, volunteering, learning about organic farming, and staying uh, with them, working with animals, just picking up whatever skills I could, and meeting people through couch surfing. So I did that for three months. And throughout that experience, <clears throat> it really, it really, really hit the point home for me that there are certain things in this world that I value and certain things that I don't. And most of the things that I do value are not material things. And when I was on the road, I had my, my bike for, you know, my travel. I had the supplies I needed to get through whatever situation may have came. I was either staying in my tent for shelter or staying with somebody else or staying on one of the farms for shelter. So my basic needs were all taken care of. The only need I had to, I had to worry about when I wasn't on a farm, when I was out there, you know, in the open on my bike and um, out on the road, was what I was going to eat that day. So I really started to look in and to call into question what was important, what do I spend my money on, uh, you know, and and is it all just a means to an end? You know, some people say you go to work all day to make money to put gas in your car so you can go to work. You know, and I'm trying to seek a deeper meaning, a deeper existence for myself. And the material world, the, the machinations of this Monday through Friday, um, this, this machine, it just, they're not interesting to me. And they're not interesting to a lot of people out there, but a lot of people give in to the soul-crushing machine because we don't know if there's another option. And so <clears throat> we're going to explore some of those options. And again, this is just one option. I, I'm here to start the conversation, so I hope that we get some more comments on these videos and more people putting their ideas out there. I appreciate those who have commented uh, through Facebook and on YouTube as well. I, I appreciate that. So the more I started to call into question what was important to me and what I value in my life, I thought about, okay, like, Obviously, I need food to survive, my health, and, um, you know, other than that, I don't really need a whole lot. I like to read. I, you know, we all have different interests, and this is how you can take this philosophy and these ideas that we're about to explore and see what ways you can apply them to your life, because we all have different needs, different interests, and we're, we've, we've accommodated to di we're accommodated to different things because we've all grown up in different environments. So some things might be easier to give up than others. So the more I started to get into that, I started to, I heard about, I read, you know, Thoreau. And uh, one, of his, one of the things he talks about is, um, he mentions voluntary poverty. This is kind of a, a writing on Thoreau, right? And it says, the idea, Thoreau's idea is to deliberately embrace being poor in every material sense in order to avoid the common fate of being possessed by your possessions. So I started to get into Thoreau and... Um, been into Buddhism for a couple of years and read about the aesthetics and giving up, relinquishing a lot of the material world for different reasons. And uh, if you over here on the Wikipedia page for simple living, it says simple living encompasses a number of different voluntary practices <clears throat> to simplify one's lifestyle. These may include reducing one's possessions or increasing self-sufficiency, for example. So, reducing one's possessions, increasing self-sufficiency. To me, I think those are both. We can look at those uh, from positive aspects because, as we discussed in other videos, that becoming self-sufficient is more important 
than it than it's ever been right now because we're living in a system in a day and age when most of the the models and the systems that are shown to us are not sustainable and people are needing to learn more we need to learn skills for ourselves we need to learn how to take care of ourselves and reducing your possessions I, as, as far as I'm concerned and from what I've learned is you know the the more possessions you take on the more you seem to suffer for them in some way you know whether it's just the stress over keeping and maintaining your possessions and things like that so uh, simple living voluntary poverty um, it, 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 simple living is distinct from those living in forced poverty as a volu voluntary lifestyle choice and these are some of the different uh, reasons that people may choose to to be a, a participant in voluntary poverty or simple living. Uh, spirituality, health, increase in quality time for family and friends, work, life balance, personal taste, frugality, or reducing personal ecological footprint and stress. Simple living can also be a reaction to materialism and conspicuous consumption. Some people also cite socio-political goals aligned with the anti-consumerist or anti-war movements, including conservation, social justice, tax resistance, and sustainable development. For me, the, the reason I, I got into this, what, it did start with tax resistance. A few years back I heard about the war tax resistance movement, and I know there's, uh, there's groups centered around this and helping promote this idea. There's tax protesters, people who don't believe taxes are legal in general, and I think I fall in that category as well, that I don't think I should be taxed. But I also see myself as a tax protester because even if I was to buy into a system or a community on a local level and we had a currency and I was willing to voluntarily give some of my currency towards the cause, that would be my first, it would be a voluntary choice, there would be no gun in the room. So that's the first issue. And it wouldn't be blood money as well. Like I you know, the the reason the main reason I don't support taxes now is because I don't want to have any of my hard work and I'm not opposed to hard work. I'm ready, I'm ready to work and to do whatever. I just want to know that I just don't want my money to go towards paying taxes that go towards uh, wars and drone bombing children in Pakistan, Somalia, Yemen, Libya, Afghanistan, and Iraq. So that was what really got me turned on the path of trying to avoid taxes of all kind and to be a tax resistor, tax protester, to get into voluntary poverty, to get into simple living. For one, just connecting to nature, reconnecting to the planet, getting away from the material world of chasing the, the, uh, the dollar everywhere you go. Um, and in my desire to, to help uh, the, the, the world, the city, to be an activist, to uh, help people become more aware, I awoke to the ideas of su sustainability, you know, of gardening, of being um, self-sufficient, all these different things. And at first it was out of an interest uh, of survival, survival instincts. But now it has evolved more to a point where this is the life that I want to live. I want to go in this direction now. I've chosen voluntary poverty and decided to make certain sacrifices to go without certain things to have a, what I feel is a, is, a, is a more fulfilling life. Um, obviously there's these sacrifices, you know, so what? think about that. What do you sacrifice? The only things I personally, and I'm sure there's all kinds of different tips out there, you can find a lot of good blogs about people who've gone uh, years without money. Look up Mark Boyle, The Moneyless Man. Uh, he's got a book. He, he set up a uh, community uh, called, I think it's Just for the Love of It is the website. It's called the, the Free... I can't remember the name of it, but look up Mark Boyle, the moneyless man. So this is, you know, there's a lot of people who've tried different ways for this, and this is just one method. And I understand that my method, uh, this method is not for everyone, um, and probably extreme to some people. Uh, but I've learned many lessons about myself, family, and my community through doing this over the past, going on three years now, choosing to go without certain things. So the only bills that I personally pay are um, a rent that I pay to help keep the Freethinker house, and food. Those are my only bills. I don't have insurance. I don't really go out much. Um, I don't spend a lot of money on, I don't know, I just, I, I eat and I live and I go out and I find other ways to enjoy myself. And sometimes I definitely would like to be thriving more than I am now. So I think that there is definitely, there's a place of balance that you can get to that I haven't quite got to yet. But this has been an experiment for me over the past three years. And it's one that I can't see stopping anytime soon because I'm glad to say that I haven't contributed to any of the violence that's going on around the world. Um, 
by my vote or by my my dollar in the past two two or three years. I'm happy with that, and I don't plan on going back. So I'm looking for other ways and striving to find a way that I can exist and live free without having a guilty conscience and maybe help others get out of the matrix and find ways. And again, I know that this way is, is going to be harder for some people because I'm speaking from a perspective of a single 27-year-old male um, who doesn't mind struggling so much. Um, and so everybody has their own level of what they're willing to give up or not. You know, Maybe some people can't go without their favorite ice cream. Others are willing to sacrifice a couple of things and to go without going to the, you know, to go without having to go to the movies every weekend or something so that they can be a little more frugal or spend more time at home or spend more time outdoors and do something else, you know, instead of needing to spend money. I think a lot of us have had this drilled into us through advertising and this consumerist corporate culture that we live in that if we're not spending money, you're not doing anything of value. And that's a really silly idea and it's one that hopefully we can get past and there's a lot of different methods, so hopefully you guys can post some some ideas of yours, ways that you actively uh, avoid or fight the system. And this, to me, again, goes to agorism, trying to find ways outside the system to compete without it. Um, part of that as well, with along with voluntary poverty and a way of tax resistance, is to utilize the gray market. And if you choose so, the black market. The black market, of course, being the things that the state, the government deems illegal, and the gray market being the area of exchange where there's uh, no taxation, for example, you cutting my lawn and us agreeing on said payment uh, without the tax man in the middle. So utilize those areas, help those grow, and then the current system that they have built, which is based on blood money and war and greed, that a lot of us don't want to participate but are forced into the system. I know a lot of good people who don't want to contribute to the same things that I don't want to contribute, but they don't have the the ability or the time or the the readiness to uh, to go to voluntary poverty or they have other tactics but we've all got blood on our hands as, while we're supporting the system while we're paying taxes to it and it's a fact that we need to come to grips with and we need to find ways that we can stop that now because as long as we are feeding this machine it's going to continue to go we need to find a way to lay ourselves on the gears and the levers of this machine and slow it down and make sure that our our every our every movement that we're doing, interaction with each other, is an affront, a resistance to this machine that continues to, to press on um, in the face of the people. So, yeah, that's my method, voluntary poverty, foregoing certain luxuries, getting closer to nature, becoming more sustainable. And some of the practices that are used for sim uh, simple living are reducing consumption, um, reducing your income and possessions, and that's definitely something that I have uh, gone through as well. Some people practice simple living by reducing consumption, by lowering expenditure on goods or services. It is possible to increase savings, which can lead to financial independence and the possibility of early retirement. Um, yeah, I don't know about that for me, but it's definitely helped down cut, waste, cut spending money on wasteful things because I save my money for what I really need. The time saved may be used to help family or volunteering. Um, another approach to focus more fundamentally on the underlying motivation of buying and consuming so many resources for a quality of life. So, it's basically people seek to buy happiness and by reducing your, you know, your use of money and your, your uh, consumerist behavior, you can detach from that, that kind of thinking that, again, it's been imprinted on us and taught to us. And a lot of us see past it, but a lot of people also, because they're not doing that internal work that so many of us need to do, they're trying to fill another hole. And whether they do it through drugs or alcohol or sex or gambling or shopping or spending money, they, we get that ex energy exchange, that you know, s satisfaction, that you know, gratification of doing something, having some kind of exchange but then it, that feeling's quickly gone and it returns and you have somebody who's a consumer for a long period of time so reducing your consumption your income and your possessions um, also increasing self-sufficiency like you were saying earlier just in general these are methods of living a better life that's closer to nature in general also some people re reconsider technology often abandoning technology completely if, again these are all dependent on what your beliefs are and what area what how you want to work this you know what what's important to you simplifying your diet 
And uh, yeah, there's a number of different reasons besides tax resistance, anti-war, environmentalist movements have also done things like this. So it's a it's a method that's out there. And if you're tr in our in our pursuit of how to stand up against a machine that is so big, we got to consider all options. So shoot your ideas out there of what you what you think about voluntary poverty and what you're trying to do to get it done. And one last point I would like to add from my experience pursuing voluntary poverty, simple living, is try not to make your effort to to be a tax resistor or to be uh, you know a uh, simple liver. Try to have that experience without being a burden on other people, you know, because if you if you're just being a drain on somebody else within society and they're having to work that much harder and harder and they're having they're end up feeding the state that much more just to try to compensate to help carry you, carry your own weight. You know, every individual makes their own decision and every individual is responsible for themselves. So if you choose voluntary poverty, you choose to be a king, whatever it is that you you choose, you know, you choose tax resistance you choose to go off the grid, whatever it is, don't be, don't be dependent on somebody else. Allow, allow yourself to become fully empowered, 100% self-rule, 100% responsibility. Help when you can, and your community will help them, you know, when they can. So, just think about it, guys. We'll be back later. If you can hear this, you are the resistance.